Good day, my friends, and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. I'm Yanke Oscar 6, Delta X Echo, and today we have another exciting project. Uh, I built another CW transmitter for my friend Vlad, Yanke Oscar 5, Bravo Delta Lima, and I'm really excited about this project. I want to build one uh, for myself as well. But uh, without wasting any time, let's get here on the table. We're going to take a closer look. We'll do some power measurements, harmonic suppression test. Uh, you get to hear how it sounds and we'll talk a little bit about the schematic and the way I built it. But of course, I'm not going to continue without saying thank you to my friends at PCBWay for always sponsoring and supporting the DX Explorer channel. They have great PCB prototyping services, PCB assembly, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing and a lot more available for you. Don't forget about the module store where you can go pick up some interesting things that might be useful for your project. And remember, always um, put the stuff in the basket over there together with the um, PCB boards that you might order from PCB Way, so you get everything in one package. And talking about the today's project, I'm going to design a PCB board uh, for this one as well, which will be available on my uh, project files uh, page uh, on PCB Way. So please feel free to go over there and have a look at the projects that I have presented so far. If you don't have an account for PCB Way, have a look down in the video description and use the link uh, to register for your new account and you'll get a discount on your first order. As I'm always saying, PCB Way is the way. So here's the little transmitter that I built for, for Vlad. Um, it has a simple VXO. It goes uh, from uh, somewhere around 14.053 megahertz up to 14.063 or 64, something like that. Anyway, and um, I have this LED that will definitely light up once we're transmitting. This is a switch to change from uh, TX to uh, reception. So the, my logic told me that once I'm pointing the switch on the outside, it's TX because I'm transmitting and uh, the signal goes out. And for receive, I placed it inside because it's, you know, in and <laughs> it means receive. So that's my simple logic. On the back, we have the two connectors. This is the main connector. Here we connect the antenna and uh, this one goes to the switch and uh, I'll show you inside um, and I'll explain, I'll explain a little bit more over there. And right here we have the second BNC. This one goes uh, with a coax cable to the receiver and of course the DC switch. I didn't put any other uh, power on and off switch because it doesn't make sense. It's just a waste of, a waste of switches. Um, I just plug and unplug the transmitter from the power supply and by the way I already have a switch on the power supply so yeah it made no sense to place it on this one so let's open it really quick I'll show you what's inside and we'll talk a little bit about the schematic so here it is it's all built Manhattan style this is the prototype I will end up uh, designing a PCB board for this one and um, Again, this is just a transmitter portion of the um, Pixie CW transceiver and um, I'll show you later on and I'll explain uh, what was the reason on uh, why I designed uh, something separate and I didn't build the entire um, transceiver circuit, <laughs> but I really like old school stuff, you know, when you have the transmitter on one side, the receiver on the other side and you could use multiple transmitters with the same receiver, so basically in my thinking, it's economy of parts. You build one good receiver, if possible, multiband, because I'm planning to uh, somehow slowly, slowly build a 100% um, uh, analog receiver um, that it will be uh, from 160 to the 10 meters band. So then I can use that one with a bunch of other gear that I'm building. Of course, it will work both for SSB to CW or AM and um, yeah this is the the one that I built so far um, you have the schematic on the screen if you want to take a, cl uh, a closer look it ended up on a breadboard um, and I've been experimenting and 
changing parts values, uh, inductor values and so on and I've been playing around until I got the best results possible and after that I transfer everything on the on the um, disk upper board over here building everything uh, the way it is. Um, I actually changed the transistors just because I thought it's a cooler thing uh, to, <laughs> to do. Um, it looks more vintage if I'm using metal can transistors. So for the um, um, oscillator circuit I'm using a BC107 and as the final I'm using a 2219A. Um, originally and of course I will leave the same in the uh, in the PCB design I will use two uh, 2N2222 transistors or maybe 2N3904 uh, uh, doesn't matter you can use um, any of them but yeah performs really nice and now let's talk really quick about the switching system because um, this is what I, I did trying to help Vlad to to make his life really easier to combine this one with a modern uh, receiver so uh, we have the antenna input again coming on this connector and it goes to the switch and from the switch right now we are on the receive position it goes through the white cable and it goes to the um, um, output uh, of the uh, coax cable that will go uh, to the antenna input of the receiver when we put it in TX mode the signal goes uh, from the transmitter through the other white cable it goes to the switch and from the back black cable it goes out into the antenna now when the transmitter is in receive mode over here I have installed a tiny uh, I believe it's 500 milliwatts I don't think that's a 1 watt resistor but 500 milliwatts still is enough for this one and uh, that is a 50 ohm resistor that I'm using as a dummy load when the uh, transmitter is in a receive position just in case by mistake we forget to uh, switch to TX and we start transmitting the uh, um, PA stage will not uh, work without a dummy load and this way we avoid the possibility of burning the 2N2219 um, transistor so this is the whole theory the variable capacitor is just a cheap Chinese capacitor uh, 60 picofarads I'm using 14.060 um, uh, megahertz crystal and uh, yeah I think everything else it's pretty much as in is in the schematic except the transistors and uh, it works fantastic it's really stable I really like it uh, but I was lucky I had this enclosure sent from Vlad uh, he sent me to build some projects in it and I ended up building something <laughs> exactly for him so yeah I, I really like it I want to build uh, one for me as well actually I want to build um, uh, probably I might experiment and I might add a separate uh, stage I, I will transform this stage in a buffer um, this one I will use it as a PA um, I might use a BD uh, one 39 uh, with a heatsink and over here I will have um, the VXO circuit that I'm going to present in the next video probably next week uh, with two transistors and that one will be uh, more stable and this way I can cover actually the entire CW portion of one particular band and uh, this way I might build something similar for each uh, amateur radio band from 160 meters up to the 10 meters band depending on of course on how I have the crystals but it's really cool project I like it so um, yeah uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the way it works and I'll show you practically uh, how I use it here's a quick power test um, I am powering the transmitter with 12 volts I have uh, set up the RF watt meter on the 1 watt scale and of course I'm transmitting into the um, dummy load the external one not the internal one of the uh, transmitter so let's see the power output about 400 milliwatts and as you can tell the signal is really stable and I really like that um, so I'm pretty happy <laughs> now let's see the harmonic suppression test 
So, um, for the harmonic suppression test, uh, I already have the 40 dB of attenuation on the um, output of the, uh, the dummy load, the RF tab, basically. Um, I also put minus 30 dB here of attenuation, um, just because I'm trying to uh, always <laughs> make sure that I'm not messing up my, my tiny SA. This is a valuable tool for me, so um, I'm not trying to force things. So let's transmit with the maximum output power. So with all the attenuation, uh, right now our signal level is somewhere around minus 16 dB. So let's click measure. We're going to click harmonic 14.060. Measure and let's start transmitting. So it looks like a clean signal. Uh, this is with the attenuation that I have inside. Let me take the attenuation out uh, just for demonstration purposes. This is uh, again the modified uh, Pine Network low pass filter. It's not bad, it's not excellent either, I think it, <laughs> we can do it better, but to keep things simple and uh, um, parts count uh, to a minimum, I think this is a, um, a, an appropriate filter for this kind of transmitter, especially at this power. So the harmonics level, it's not bad, but uh, it could be better, I mean definitely it could be better, but uh, right now it's not bad at all either. Alright, I think it's safe to, to get on air with it. <laughs> so here's a real life example, um, using the transmitter with uh, this tiny uh, receiver that I also received as a gift from Vlad. And, uh, it's a nice combination, you know, between old analog technology and modern digital technology, which I don't really necessarily like, uh, but this one it is indeed um, a nice receiver, especially for beginners. And as you can tell, um, it's nice to use in portable together with a, a transmitter similar to this one. So it works fantastic. Uh, right now let's pretend we're in receiving mode we would listen to whatever we listen um, into the receiver if we transmit by mistake nothing happens because we install the dummy load inside on the switch we go back into transmit mode and we answer to whatever call we uh, want so the way i set up the whole thing for vlad is that uh, when this one point white point on the a button it's uh, pointing uh, towards the LED then the transmitter is somewhere close to 14.060 megahertz where the receiver is tuned right now so for example I want to uh, adjust the frequency I will go as close as possible to 14.060 start transmitting really quick I can even do it in RX mode, so uh, I don't bother any anybody while transmitting. And it works, now I'm switching to transmit and I start transmitting. And of course we're receiving and back to transmit and so on so it's really easy to use you can also use a different receiver of course i'm going to try to build a matching receiver for this uh, little transmitter uh, also inspired uh, from the pixie transceiver probably will be the other half but a little bit more complicated and uh, it should sound um, way better uh, before we end the video for today, I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, 
I built this one just the way it is and the schematic on the screen the, the way you saw it earlier um, with one reason in, uh, in my mind. Uh, Vlad would like to adjust the power output that he's transmitting with and uh, he wants you know either the maximum power which is 400 I don't know 300 400 milliwatts of output power uh, whatever this one has um, and he also wants to go as low as maybe 30 40 milliwatts of power um, he really likes doing QSOs with this minimal uh, power output and he, he got me as well because I, I want to do the same so um, but I need to learn the code for that but the idea was that um, we are able to power the um, the transmitter with anything between 5 volts up to 12 volts is tested uh, if we go under 5 volts then the, the oscillator will, will stop oscillating but 5 volts is still a, a good voltage to power up the transmitter well thanks so much for watching the today's video i hope you liked it i hope you like this project as much as i do i'll see you in the next video until then thank you one more time for sticking around with dx explorer and 73 from yankee oscar 6 delta x-ray echo I have no idea what I'm sending. I know some numbers must be, if I remember well. But God, I really need to learn the code because I'm building all this cool stuff, and uh, and I really love simple gear like this one. And and I don't know the code. <laughs> it's so annoying. I, I have to find some time to learn it. Um, and I, I know you guys send me a lot of tips on, hey, find ten minutes each day and try to listen to practice. I don't have those ten minutes. If I had them, I would definitely use them for CW. Hopefully, uh, before winter comes, I, I might find some time, finally, some free time to learn the code. But, by the way, the, the, uh, this kind of simple gear for, for um, CW, it's actually the reason why I got into amateur radio. So I really, really need to learn the code. What was the SOS thing?